OpenAI is looking to do what was previously thought as the unthinkable and take on Google in the web search realm. Now, this is not really a shocker as a lot of people are reportedly using OpenAI's ChatGPT more and more to replace what they used to use for Google, right? You used to use Google to search for everything. Now, I literally talk to my wife and friends and they're like, oh yeah, I was just researching this topic and in my brain, I'm thinking, oh yeah, they were on Google and they're like, and ChatGPT said that I should do X, Y, and Z and blah, blah, blah. And it like, it kind of blows my mind because this is a big paradigm shift. Even my co-host on AI Applied, Connor Grennan says that he uses Perplexity AI, which is sometimes accessing ChatGPT to pretty much replace all of his Google searches. So I think this is a massive shift. And today on the podcast, I'm going to be breaking down exactly what they're doing um, and why I think they may be giving Google a serious run for their money where Google has sort of fallen flat in a lot of different areas. People would have expected a little bit more. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about here is that um, in all of this, um, this is all according to some sources familiar with the matter. OpenAI is looking at doing this kind of search services um, and they're going to be leveraging Microsoft's Bing to some extent. Now, this kind of doesn't, you know, some people might be like, oh, what's the what's the news here? What's new? Because Microsoft Bing has been incorporated into ChatGPT. You can use browse with Bing and it will search the Internet and kind of use ChatGPT at the same time. But I think they're going a little bit beyond that. So here's a couple key points. Number one is that OpenAI's new venture into search is seen as a direct challenge to right now Google, who has complete supremacy over the search engine market. Even Bing, who is kind of like the number two player in this, is a you know, a single digit percentage of the search market. Google really completely dominates this. Um, this is all following, like I mentioned, we have some other big players, Perplexity, which have shown a lot of promising early growth and have in attracted investment from, you know, people like Jeff Bezos. They have raised millions and millions of dollars and I think our people are starting to take them seriously. So despite, um, the, the last thing I want to bring up is that despite Microsoft being um, really being pushed for quite a long time. It's embedded into Windows. When you get your first new PC, there's Edge that opens up and then Bing is kind of the default browser and you got to go and reset that to Google Chrome or Brave or something else for your browser and you got to get off of Bing as your default search engine. Um, and this is like for millennials kind of or, you know, Gen Z, whatever, like a younger and a younger audience sees this as kind of like the, I don't know, like this is the inaugural, this is what I do with every new PC. Like the first thing I do, I'm like, okay, get the new web browser, get the new default search engine. Okay, let's move on with my life. Um, but I think a lot of people, you know, Microsoft for an older generation had tried to kind of hard code themselves in. So despite all that effort, they have had very little impact um, in Google's essentially stronghold on the search market. So I think that the backdrop of this new move by OpenAI to break in where Bing perhaps has not been successful and even perplexity, like they're, they're a great startup and they're making a lot of strides, but they're not, you know, they're no means challenging or taking over any re, uh, sizable market share at the moment. So all of this um, is as Microsoft CEO Nadella, uh, I, I think like a year ago, uh, he was talking about this whole thing and he said that... Um, <laughs> partnering essentially with opening eyes capabilities and putting that into Bing. He wanted to make Google dance. This is, you know, something that was kind of controversial back then. Um, however, I think, you know, even doing that and even embedding open AI into Bing and kind of having chat with, uh, you know, chat with AI on, on like Bing didn't make a big dent. So can open AI make a sizable difference? The exact relationship right now between this new search product and open AI's existing ChatGPT service, uh, which currently uses Bing's web index is not 100% clear, um, but OpenAI might be um, looking to kind of enhance the speed and efficiency of its service. Um, and I think that this could actually address some of the current limitations that ChatGPT is facing in terms of response time. Um, we've seen, you know, some brand new um, tech. There is a, a new AI model called Grok with a Q, not a K, I guess Elon Musk's Grok on Twitter have some beef and legal things to solve there. Um, but it is incredibly fast, lightning fast. It uses instead of a GPU, uh, a G or an LL, LPU. Um, and it, so it's a different kind of architecture. They have some chips that they've actually built for this thing and it's super fast. And I think OpenAI is moving in that direction as well. So if they're able to do that, really increase the speed, launching a search service could escalate their competition with Google, especially as Google has been playing catch up in the field of AI for quite a long time. I talk about this all the time. Um, and I'm sure people are sick of hearing me kind of beg on Google, but like 
really i feel like they should be the player they should be like what meta is right now meta it feels like to me has kind of come out of left field with their open source llama models and all of this uh innovation in ai that they have and google doesn't really seem to have all that hype or isn't quite as good as open ai and feels like they've kind of fallen behind and because of that people are thinking um that they've you know benefited uh, or that OpenAI has benefited from, you know, that Google employees kind of invented some of the technology used in ChatGPT, the transformer model, and now OpenAI has kind of benefited from that and is now kind of leapfrogging them. So in, a, in this whole new startup landscape, we're seeing a bunch of different entities, right? We're seeing Perplexity. They're trying to disrupt this, the traditional search market. What's interesting with them is they'll allow you to actually search with any different AI model, Claude, OpenAI, Mistral, and they even have their own in-house AI model. Um but they are paid. They're not free. And so a lot of people are asking if OpenAI does release a search product, how are they going to monetize this, right? Perplexity is $20 a month and then you get unlimited searches. You get some like limited amount of searches if you use their free model. And I think it defaults to their own um, AI model and you don't get to use others. But it's going to be interesting to see what OpenAI actually does. And Perplexity was actually founded by an ex-OpenAI researcher, um, Arvind, who has, you know, got a bunch of big investments, but, um, you know, this is all kind of a spinoff. And so when you start seeing these spinoffs in my mind, it, it's kind of like, okay, these spinoffs are coming out of OpenAI. That means there's probably people inside of OpenAI also working on this. I feel like we saw this when um, we had some big companies saying they're going to create agents and then OpenAI is like, yeah, we're actually doing that internally. And those companies had also spun off of OpenAI or people from within. This is a trend I think we'll continue to see. Right now, the, um, the rivalry isn't just, of course, AI. This is a talent war that's going on between OpenAI and Google. Both of these companies are trying to get the top AI expertise. Like if they want to win this AI battle, they essentially have to have the top players. Um, and so they're trying to be the most relevant. And I think right now we're seeing a lot of this fight. And right up until this point, we've really seen the fight go one way where OpenAI comes up with this amazing tool, ChatGPT, and then Google's like, we can do that too. And then tries to, you know, create Bard and now it's called Gemini, whatever. Um, but now it would appear that OpenAI is playing a little bit more on the offensive where they're like, okay, you're going to come into our realm and create, you know, a competitor to our AI product. We're going to create a competitor to your search product, which is looking like what they're, um, they're planning on doing. So I think right now, OpenAI's potential entry into the search market raises a bunch of different questions about its um strategies here specifically because microsoft has some substantial advertising revenue from bing and google um obviously is all of their money comes from ads so this is not something that they want any sort of threat to uh this any sort of threat to what they're what they're doing there google is not gonna you know take kindly to um Google, of course, has cautiously integrated AI-generated answers into their search results. Um, they've introduced a subscription-based model for Gemini, their advanced LLM, but it's not. It, it's obviously still free to do regular Google searches. That's just if you kind of want their advanced LLM for different projects, then you can pay a subscription to it. So Google CEO Sundar Pichai acknowledged that the potential for AI could really reshape the search industry. Um, he said that there's a bunch of opportunities for both established and emerging players, right? He seemed to be kind of positive and playing to the the um, fact that this might be good for them. As OpenAI is gearing up to introduce this new search product, though, um, you know, this is including, they have a bunch of different products as well. They have advanced agents for task automation. Right now, we're all kind of looking to see what a search play by them would look like beyond just some sort of, you know, Microsoft Bing integration into ChatGPT, which they've already had. I think this is kind of a no-brainer when you start to see this the success of perplexity. Um, OpenAI obviously wants a piece of that action. Um, what I will say is that, um, of course, an OpenAI search app would be a direct competitor to Google. But I think um, it's going to be interesting to see how that rolls out because it doesn't appear that OpenAI is creating their own search engine per se. They're still kind of leaning on Microsoft's Bing. Um, and so I think it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Maybe this is a play in the future where OpenAI uh, could, you know, go to Google and say, hey, if you pay us more, we'll make you the default search engine on our search platform. I don't know if I'll actually, if I actually see that happening because, um, you know, Google's got kind of this, <laughs> Google's got a big rivalry. They want to kind of keep all of their search traffic on their site, I think, at this point. But it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. OpenAI does have over 100 million weekly active users. So a massive, very 
active audience and a big percentage of that is paying. I believe they just passed a $2 billion annual recurring revenue run rate right now. So they are creating a ton. And this is just, you know, purely for people paying, whereas Google's got the other model where they're, you know, trying to generate billions from um, just the ads on the searches. So I think there's a lot of potential here. Obviously, a lot of people are willing to pay for this. It's going to be very interesting to see if OpenAI goes with their classic subscription model they've been doing for ChatGPT, or if they go for some sort of ad model, which seems to be less popular now, but that allows you to do the freemium. Um, and so that obviously is what has led to Google's meteoric rise and becoming so successful. So I'll keep you up to date as this product, as we get more information about this product, as OpenAI starts developing and launching some of these new search features. But all in all, I think this is just really impressive news because this shows that Google is um, definitely beyond getting competed at and kind of getting made fun of on the AI front. Now this is coming back to the home base of search. And I think they really need to focus on reinventing and making sure that their search product is as good as possible so that it doesn't get, you know, disrupted by some of these new players who have maybe some new ideas and new ways of doing things that haven't been done before. Opening, I think, is a strong player in this regard, but we'll see how this rolls out. And I'll definitely keep you up to date on everything that happens.